Hi kingfishers and kites. We're going to be learning about anecdotes today. You're going to need a pen and paper or pencil and paper handy. You're going to be needing to pause my video occasionally to make notes. So you pause it now, make sure that you've got your pen and paper if necessary. What is an anecdote? Can you think about what might be an anecdote? Have you ever heard that word before? I'm going to find out today if you're not sure. There we go. So anecdotes, oh, I'm in the way of the words. There we go. Anecdotes are personal stories. So stories, if we're writing a biography, then it's going to be a story about the person that we're writing about. So it's a personal story about that person. It's rather than the facts, although it should be based on fact, um, it's more of a story and it's very useful to support a point in persuasive writing when you're trying to persuade someone to your type of point. But it's also really useful to help you support um, a character description in your biography. So if you're trying to make a point about what someone's character is like, uh, let me move me out the way. No, I've lost my mouse. Never mind. Um, it can support a point you're making about your uh, about Martin Luther King, for instance, to tell a bit about his character, his personality, and help someone empathise with them. So empathy is when you can feel what they're feeling. So it's something that they can relate to, something that maybe you go, oh, I was a child too, or I'm a child, and I can imagine going on a bus and someone doing that to me. So it helps you to understand the person a bit better because you you feel a bit more like you're part of their life. You can relate to it. It's a bit more like yours. So when I wrote, there's my mouse, when I wrote the biography um, or I, about Dr. Pearson last week before you wrote your first biography, um, my sister, I included an anecdote in it. So let's see if you can find the anecdote that I included. Okay, so can you see it? Press pause and see if you can find, read it through, see if you can find the anecdote that I have included. It's not just one word, it's a whole story. So where's the story? We're, we're talking about a formal biography, but then it has a story within it. Okay, did you find it? So it's all of this bit where I'm talking about her character, really. Not at the beginning. So due to being a relentless optimist, Pearson has taken on many challenges which others discourage. That's not the anecdote. However, the anecdote is being led, we're, we're being led into it here. It's no surprise, blah, blah, blah. And then here it is. Many would consider it eight years old, seeing her sister nearly run over and covered in blood, being rushed to hospital for stitches to be an ordeal. However, in typical Pearson style, she instead became very excited and prodded her sister's open head wound, peered under the bandages, explored the hospital and observed the doctors. So that's a story. We can picture it happening. You can imagine yourself at eight years old with your sister or brother, if you have one, and imagine, would you be able to behave like that? Would you have behaved like that or not? But you can relate to it in some way. So it's an anecdote. It's a story within a more formal biography. So I'm going to tell you three anecdotes about Martin Luther King. And what I want you to do is pause and make notes as I talk. So every now and then, so that you can make notes, you'll probably want to pause the video and quickly write down some notes. Um, and so you're not necessarily writing it properly at the moment, you're making notes. And then when the video is finished, you can take your notes. Um, so my notes look like this at the moment. I made some notes as I was reading about Martin Luther King. So that's story one, story two, and story three, I've written notes. Um, and I'm now going to tell the story based on those notes. You, rather than telling the story out loud, although that would be a good thing to practice first, you'll then write it down so you might want to say it out loud and then write down your words. So I need to put them in order. So number one. OK, so the story one or the anecdote, I should say, that you can include in your Martin Luther King biography. 
We've all heard now about his very famous I have a dream speech. But what many don't know is that before he made that speech, he had a lot of speech writers helping him write a speech. So he had people, he was in a hotel room, ready to go to the big protest that he'd helped organise with hundreds of thousands of people coming. So he was very nervous. And he was in his hotel room trying to get it right. So you're about to speak in front of over 100,000 people. You want your speech to be good. And his speech writers kept, they were downstairs and they kept sending up ideas for the speech or actual speech speeches that were, they'd written. And he was looking at them and make, crossing things out. He was very, very particular about it being just right. Just before he was about to make his speech, he, he said, this is my speech, and he held up a blank piece of paper because as far as he was concerned, he still didn't have a speech that was good enough. When he came to do his speech, he was, wasn't the only speaker. He, there'd been a number of speakers before him. And so the audience, they'd travelled for miles and miles as well to come to the, the protest. They were tired and they were bored of listening to speakers. And they weren't very receptive, so they weren't... Um, very engaged. They weren't listening very well to the speech because they were just tired and bored. And he realised that as he was giving his speech. And he was standing at very still at the podium where you stand to give your speech with the notes in front of you. And then suddenly he just went, he realised and went, grabbed the microphone and walked away from the podium and just started walking around the stage and became alive and animated. And he was a big churchgoer. And in his church, the um, they would speak very animatedly. They would be um, very enthusiastic and they get their audience all involved. And he started using that sort of preacher technique um, and started telling and made up that I have a dream um, speech right there and then. It wasn't written down in front of him. And suddenly the audience woke up and started listening and thought, oh, this sounds really good. Um, story two. When he was just 14 years old, so we'll picture him just 14 years old, he travelled from Atlanta to Georgia, which is 90 miles by bus. He was sitting with his teacher friend, his, uh, so an adult who was with him, um, who was also black, like him, on the bus. And then some white people got on the bus. Now, the rules were, or well, the law was, that when a white person gets on the bus, he has to stand up and make room for them so they can sit down. Remember, this is a 90-mile journey, which would take hours. But he had to get out of his seat, even though he was there first, and make room for them. Now, not just that, he apparently didn't move quickly enough. So the white people started cursing him, saying nasty things, and tutting and being rude because he didn't move quickly enough out of their way so that they could have the seat. He was furious. He spent the whole of that journey absolutely furious. Um, he was so angry. He says it was the most angry moment of his life. He was just so, so angry. And he really battled with that because... Um, it leads me into the third story. So that's that's the end of that story, but it leads into the third story, which is that he battled all of his life to try and stay calm. He didn't want to be an angry person. He didn't feel that anger was the way to get what you want. If you start shouting at someone, they stop listening. They don't take you seriously anymore. And he knew that. And he wanted to be taken seriously, particularly as they would have, as soon as they see the colour of his skin, they would have already not been taking him seriously. So he knew that he had to show that he was calm and um, well-spoken. So he would use lots of formal language like we were talking about yesterday, uh, the day before. So um, he spent a lot of time trying to keep himself calm. And if you've heard, heard of Gandhi, 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 when you eventually do, if you haven't already, you'll know that it, it's all about peaceful protesting. And Martin Luther King looked up to him and wanted to be a peaceful protester. And he wanted to make 
all of the other black people that were following him to also be peaceful protesters. Once, this is my story, um, well, not my story, his story, a, he was giving a speech and a member, a white member of the Nazi party, because it's still a party, even though World War II had ended, um, jumped on the stage and repeatedly punched him in the face repeatedly again and again and again and had to be they had to drag the man off him lots of his bodyguards had to, or friends had to drag the man off martin luther king um and drag him away and martin luther king was obviously um very badly hurt however he thought about it and he decided not to press charges with the police because he wanted to show the world that he was a calm peaceful protester he didn't fight back he wanted to show the kind of character that he was and so that's the end of that story hopefully you've made lots of notes um, for those three stories of uh, showing the kind of person that he was okay and it's really um, important that you include these anecdotes in your biography as a story so that people can relate to it and feel like they know Martin Luther King a little bit better. Hopefully you also feel now that you know Martin Luther King a little bit better. I look forward to seeing these stories written up to be included in your biography. So think about how they'll fit within your biography. Think back to um, where I showed you at the beginning how whoop, I included a bit of a story within the biography of Dr. Kim Pearson. So you can include it, you've got some facts, a bit about, oh, this is what her personality is like, and then a story to prove that that's the kind of person that she is. So you can include it in a character paragraph, or you might include it somewhere else in your biography. I really look forward to seeing what you come up with.